Welcome to the uh, unofficial stage two of this guy. So this little rock bouncer was supposed to be a one and done. But after test driving it a little bit, I found a few areas that I would like to improve. So that leads me to this little build tuning session here. So what we've got today, a um, couple things I've been waiting on here. And one of these uh, is the little Jura brass patty weights. These are the nine gram patty weights that uh, situate on the plus four millimeter axles, or I guess anything wider really than plus four. Um, nothing really new or special about these except they're black. And the fact that most of this is in Jura slash Trio, I decided to order these up um, and everything is really black and red on there. So going to get a little more weight to help the climbing, get a little more bias to the front end. Uh, second thing, I've got uh, actual overdrive gears from Trio. So these I pulled out of a build I did a little while back. I didn't end up using them. And uh, as I said in this initial build, once I got this in and uh, taped the wheels and tested it, these Enjora overdrive gears were not overdrive gears. So it's just typical running gear. So I'm going to take that out. So that again should help the turning radius and the climbing, uh, having these wheels going a little bit faster. And then the last item is this uh, hopefully really neat and hopefully really handy product from Kinetic. This is the Kinetic recoil uh, limiter system for the telescoping shocks. So it comes with little laser etched hooks and then the springs and then the chain that you're going to cut to length. So that should help uh, bring the overall stance down, help lower that CG a little, help keep these uh, shocks from unloading on climbs especially these front shocks. So brand new kind of to the market. I've seen a few people test them and I just wanted to give them a shot. I'm a fan of Kinetic. Uh, just, you know, always like to try something new. So we'll see if uh, those end up improving or uh, just frustrate me. So let's get this stuff on. All right, got those Enjura patty weights on there. And those look awesome. Those end up being the same diameter as these uh, version one trio hex weights, which I don't know that they make these anymore. They make ones that are bigger that look like brake discs, but with the chamfer to the inside, that's just like a super fat brass barrel. That looks nice. Um, these have the name kind of engraved or not engraved, I guess, just not printed black and then that nice machined edge so got those on so now we'll get the wheels on and actually test and take a look at this overdrive make sure it's all good to go and then we'll jump into those uh, recoil springs and get that system put on and take a look at that okay time for the moment of truth Let's see if this actually worked. Well, looks like it. That's some overdrive. All right. So let's take a look at that recoil system. All right, I just wanted to show these shocks unloading a little bit here before we put the recoil system on there so they typically as soon as they hit they just want to unload there we go and it kicks that front end up gets that nose really high See how high we go here. Oh, we're getting that back tire off the ground. There it is. Oh, 
right there. That's not too bad. That's about four tires. It's basically on top of the utter butter. It's about the same height. Oh yeah, all over the utter butter. Easily. Look at that. Back wheels are on the ground. So it's got some really good flex right now that I do not want to don't want to lose, but we'll just see. Well, it's definitely sitting lower. Let's see if I can get an even lower shot here. Those front links are higher than the belly. So it's it definitely pulled the CG down. <clears throat> you can see them there. So let's get a little uh Let's get a little test here. Okay, so we were flexing out on that Utter Butter cap before. So that's kind of the benchmark. Let's see. Let me get up on it. Get it backed up here so it won't slide. We're just barely off the ground. Now we're on it. So we've got more extension. So it is, you know, I think if you've got weight in your wheel and if you've got the right twist and need for it, you'll get the drop. I don't see it really negatively affecting it. I think it'll be worth it. Um, for the lower CG and the ability to pull the nose down on a climb. All right, let's take a look at this front end, see if it unloads like it was before. Look at that. Not unloading at all. Just keeping it low to the ground, keeping the belly low.
almost forgot to do a quick shot here of the final weigh-in. So we ended up 54.46, adding that uh, front paddy weight to the axle. Let's see what that is in ounces. 15.3 ounces, and this is all, of course, with battery. So I'll put up what it was last time on the screen, see what we, uh, what we did. All right, I'm pretty happy with this, I think. I do want to get it out and do a proper, proper test run, but uh, it did take a little while to get these fitted, but once I kind of figured out the process, and most of it really, honestly, was getting a little screw in with a little nut backing it up to mount this hook to this frame. Um, and you can see I faced these upwards and the holes I chose pulled them back far enough so the hook or the spring can't come out of the hook. It's uh, basically pinned there by the frame. It makes a closure. And then I have, uh, of course, some extra links. So I had um, 14 in the front and I'm on nine. And I did 12 links in the back and I'm on five. Of course, uh, that really doesn't mean much because you can put these uppers in any, any hole you choose. So I just left that so I can adjust it later if needed. Um, so you still, you still get the full articulation. You got to kind of pull it. it. It does get tight at the end here. Um, but I do, that's because I've got it sucked so low to the ground, the belly. Um, if I took it back a link or two, I'd probably have easier full flex. But where it stops it is both wheels sagging. So I have to pull down to get full extension. So that's the difference. Um, side to side, especially with weights on the wheels and axles, it shouldn't be a problem to get the wheels to drop and pull those springs and get your flex. I mean, I'm not, I'm not really seeing any hindrance here. So I've got to say, my first view, I like them. Um, I don't see these popping off the vehicle. Um, the lower ones I attach to the lower link mounts. And I do have the hook facing, I believe, upward. Yes, I've got it upward. But with the tension, that's changed and come off. And actually, they're pretty, I had a tough time getting those on. They're so small. So hopefully, they won't be uh, popping off as I'm running it. But only time will tell. But I've messed with it a lot, kind of on the table off camera. Just had so much fun playing around with it. Um, you know, I haven't had any issues or any near, you know, any near catches or anything. Even with those chains hanging, hadn't been a clearance issue. So, anyways, I would recommend them if you're looking for something kind of innovative and I guess also adjustable uh, to use as limiters if you've got telescoping shocks especially if you've got some kind of custom chassis where you've got tons of mounting options for the limiters. I mean, there's so many places you could run these. So anyways, those are my thoughts. So next thing, hopefully I'll get this on a little running video. There's a expansion to the hobby shop course. So I'd like to go up there and see about running that if I get some free time. So we'll see.